Hey everyone, I wanted to talk a little bit about spirituality from a perspective that will hopefully make it more tangible to a lot of people out there. You know, there are so many special operations veterans now that are calling me and they're having their spiritual lights turned on, if you will. They're having different life experiences that are leading them to the Creator, to Jesus Christ. And it's interesting how many different ways God is bringing His own to Him. And our pastor said something today in church, this is a Sunday, and it was profound, but you know, as so many things that are profound are, that it was also so very simple. And he said, you know, we have the relationship with God that we want. Like whatever level your relationship is, it's what you want, because he's given us free will. I think uh, there's something to be said for that. If, if our relationship isn't with our creator, what we would have it be, then it's really on us, because he's standing there with arms wide open like the father of the prodigal son, you know, he's running to us. He won't force us, but he's, he's right there. It's not like we have to travel somewhere or make an appointment to speak to him. He knows our thoughts before we can ever even form the words. He's just waiting for us to say, okay, I love you back, daddy. <laughs> I love you back, Abba, father. Let's do this. You know, like any father, would and with the child trafficking my my wife says something too now that i'm talking about fatherhood she says with these people these wicked abusers and these satanic cults and these pedophiles who are destroying children she says to me what are they thinking is going to happen with them defiling and traumatizing and destroying god's most pure and precious and innocent little children on industrial scale. She said, what would any father do? What were they thinking would happen? And I'm like, Tressa, you're so right. And God help us all because it's on us. Our nation, we the people have been given the keys to this kingdom and we're not driving the bus. We're letting people who fly flags that are an abomination before the Lord over the highest institutions of our land. Flags of perversion and distortion that are a slap in his face that he speaks very clearly against. And his ways, his laws are not to keep us from having fun. They're because his laws tune us into his divine and sacred frequency, his harmony of how everything leads to that which builds up, which leads to healing and brings life. When you go against that, when you destroy and murder, you bring sickness and death. And um, when, you, when you act in ways that are counterproductive, it, it leads to destruction and death. And that's why his laws are there. Like, like children, just you know, follow my laws. If you love me, you'll follow my laws. And quit hurting yourselves and leading yourselves into destruction. And speaking of leading into destruction, man, with so many that we're interviewing the survivors, we're learning about these satanic cults and what they do to the children. And it's just so dark and nasty. Most people don't want to know about it. But folks, this is going on at such a scale now. We're learning that we could really expect just about any major institution that shows signs of corruption to be probably um, infested with, I'm looking for another word for it, um, but, but really, um, really poisoned with this cancer of this, this satanic cult, this secret society uh, dynamic that infests so many um, we talk about the Masonic lodges and the uh, satanic uh, ritual abuse groups, and they infest the upper ranks of religious institutions that you may not think. But if you start seeing signs and symptoms and having a lot of survivors coming out, you'll start realizing these institutions have been infested with this and, and corrupted with it. And it's tragic. It, it really is tragic, but it's... Not new, certainly not new. Jonathan Kahn talks about it very, very eloquently 
and wrote about it in his his books, especially his last one, Return of the Gods, small g. Uh, they're just demons that people sacrifice their children to. But that's what we're fighting against. And it's it's the same evil that, that's destroying the banking and that's issuing out pathogens on genocide campaigns. That's that's perverting and destroying the children in so many different ways. But you can see it all comes from the same camp. And every time when we hear the, the survivors talk about what they were put through when they were children, and when the lid is torn off of the 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 spirit realm when the veil is torn and they can see into the spirit realm when they're suffering unspeakable torture in their childhood uh, they they see the demonic in some cases and they see the divine it's interesting how they never see any other entity come to comfort them God's given us free will and sadly man chooses so often to exercise his free will to do evil and harm others. There is cause and effect in this temporary 3D world. And so we can harm ourselves and we can harm each other. And there are lessons to be learned from that. And some of them are very painful, very expensive. And there are children that are that are harmed, very, very deeply traumatized. Um, but they do sometimes see, and actually often, into the spirit realm. And it's only one entity. They don't see Buddha, Allah, Hare Krishna, or anyone else. They see Jesus. And he comes to comfort them in different ways, usually just let being present, letting them know he's got them and that this too shall pass and that those conducting this harm uh, will pay a heavy price. And they do see into the demonic as well and see some of what that looks like. And it's just rancid and vile. And these are murder ceremonies and, and things. Just very, it, it's what the sickest element of mankind is into. But it's important to understand that that's there when these people who are seeking so many therapies, and I want to talk about the plant based medicines and the, the psychedelics, if you will. A lot of people are having. You know, every which kind of experience with that. Let me give a word of caution and a little bit of what I've learned from that. Um, certainly not going to pose as an expert on it, but uh, there are people that have found Jesus Christ this way and, you know, thrown themselves deep into prayer and their Bible and their whole lives have been turned around because of epiphanies that they've had with a therapy involving plant-based hallucinogenic medicines. I applaud that. But I also caution very, very strongly, folks, these plant-based medicines, some of them very powerful, do um, apparently open the veil into the spirit realm. And if you're going to do that, you are exposing yourself to everything. That means the divine and the demonic. And there are exactly two entities, two involved. There are two kingdoms at war. There is Jesus Christ and there is Satan. That is it. And there is no comparison in the level of horsepower and control. No created being can comprehend the totality, the expanse, the scope of their creator. And that's what you have with Satan and God, Jesus. No comparison whatsoever. But there is conflict. And um, that's what we're seeing playing out on planet Earth, man. We're seeing all the symptoms of it. And so if you are exploring your spirituality and you're going to utilize these plant-based medicines, folks, I urge you, Research and make sure your heart is right. Make sure you are close to your creator. Pray over it. I would I would say have as many people as you can praying over it and see if you have a peace about doing it because maybe you shouldn't do it. Maybe it's not for you. I think you can get yourself into deep harm that way. 
Satan is the great deceiver. He poses as an angel of light. So can you imagine people encountering an angel of light? Of course, they're going to think, well, this is, this is for me. This is divine. And listen to whatever this angel of light says. I could tell you one thing. Anything that an angel of God Almighty sends you is never going to counter the word of God. Never. It will be in perfect harmony with the very word of God, the Holy Bible. That's one test to put everything up against. But I would say be careful. Um, I have seen some very positive results. People have come back and uh, my um, own family, we were sponsored a while back to go to a place that um, they didn't tell us what it was, but we um, we had a, a a type of therapy involving some of that and it was it was tremendously healing for us for us we were at a point to where we wanted our daughter to see our hearts because she'd been traumatized and trauma victims lash out at everybody the whole world you know until they settle down and heal it's you know everybody's going to get teeth horns and claws and we're like sweetie we're your tribe I mean, we are not the evil world that bit you <laughs> and we just want you to see us you know we're home team and so that experience did provide that she's like mm, got you now i see you everything we're we're good right um so god really moved and i think in that for me i was just completely in his heart of gratitude i was just pouring out thanks. And I was praying over the experience. I actually prayed over it. We It took us a couple of months before we ever um, decided that we were going to go. And um, <clears throat> I, I, did, I had a piece about it. And so it uh, ended up being very, very good for us. And, you know, some of the other people that were there they had mixed experiences and and I think it was because they they weren't in that heart of gratitude and you know with the Institute of Heart Math they call it the gamma wave state where your body your your heart organ and your brain create this electromagnetic field that interacts with the divine matrix which is how some scientists now are figuring maybe prayer works through that um, you can look look through all that science stuff but really it just boils down to being in a heart of gratitude the way that the Bible tells us. In all things, give thanks. and everything, give thanks. And when I pray that way daily, it just, it, I feel so much closer to God. And uh, it's a much more beautiful experience. And that's how I went into this uh, therapy. And I, I was just seeking my creator and, um, you know, praying to be close to him. And it's it brought me so much closer to him and kind of accelerated my spiritual walk with him. And I read the Bible entirely more now and I pray so much more now and I'm working on myself so much more now. So there can be tremendous things that happen through that. Now, it seems like physiologically, uh, they say it's the pineal gland in the middle of your brain that gets decalcified because of modern diet and the fluoride in the water and other toxins calcify that pineal gland. <clears throat> I don't know if that's completely accurate, but it seems like it might be. But whatever the situation is, this this some of these plant-based medicines do apparently um, kind of thin that veil and allow people to interact uh, into the spirit realm. And I think it's important for us to be situationally aware, spiritually aware, because a spiritually aware populace is one that's just about impossible to enslave. And I think that's very important in this conflict going on right now. But for crying out loud, folks, you don't need that. You, what you need is the Bible. That's all laid out in the Bible. What you need to do is pray, fast, and read your Bible. Those are the three things that tune us in the most to what we need to know. And for people that are <clears throat> maybe it's just stuck or need uh, some very deep healing, those plant-based medicines have done wonders, uh, but it's got to be you know done the right, the right way. So I don't encourage it. I don't encourage it. I, I encourage people to to tune in to 
Jesus Christ and, and his word is, is the Bible. He's given us the answers. All we have to do is really consume it and begin to know it. <clears throat> and that's the real thing. And um, man, even when I read the Bible, I get into that heart of gratitude and it helps me unlock. I ask the Holy Spirit to just unlock it and cause my conscious mind to be aware of what God wants me to know in his word that day. And that's what really has a really powerful 3D experience for me um, in that. And I say 3D, I mean an interactive, like an understanding of, of um, just not just reading words on a page, but understanding the meaning of what what God had uh, written there for us. So um, I just want to, I felt like I was supposed to address those things today. You know, um, a lot of this plant-based medicine stuff going around and people like, oh, well, we'll hold space for you or, you know, just go in with your intentionality set. Well, what does that mean? There's two entities that you need to be prepared to inter to interact with, encounter. It's either from your creator, Jesus Christ, or it's anything else. And that is from Satan and all the other entities, uh, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. All of this is um, from Satan. It's all in his camp. They all answer to Satan. And Satan answers to Jesus Christ, God Almighty. That's it. All of the other entities, space aliens and all this stuff, that's all of the fallen realm. All satanic, all demonic. So if you have encounters with spirit guides or anything else, folks, I would tell you that is you're dealing with the demonic. Even if they're telling you the kind things and nice things, I would say be very, very careful. Um, now, if it lines up exactly with the Word of God, then great. But uh, the Bible gives us what we need, right? So maybe uh, that can be a breakthrough for you with that one of those plant-based medicine experiences. Now, I think what's a better way to do it is microdosing. They call it microdosing. It means you don't feel any psychological effects at all, and you take it for... A number of days two three weeks uh, six weeks maybe um, but it's an it's a small dose and it's not enough for you to feel anything but I think that helps uh, decalcify that pineal gland so that it it's um the theory what they're talking about is there it's crystalline that little pineal gland and it and it vibrates it resonates and that kind of apparently uh, is what the mechanism physiologically lets us interact with the electromagnetic field is the divine matrix and and have us kind of understand what's going on in the spirit realm if that's accurate or not i'm not sure yet um but but that's what i'm i'm hearing and seeing and so um, that's what's proposed out there and if it if it does that if it helps you understand then then good but just stay based in the word that's what's really all about uh, everything's got to come back to that everything Anyway, I hope that helps you guys. And, you know, also, you know, I got uh, friends, first responders. They're dealing with people that, you know, they'll, they'll respond to all kinds of stuff. They see crazy people and they see people high on all kinds of crazy drugs and um, domestic fights and things like that. But they also see people, they encounter the demonic. They encounter people that are demon-possessed. And uh, ask some of your first responder friends, especially the ones that are senior that have been doing it for a long time. They'll tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, there have been times when we, you know, and they'll tell you what their stories. You know, we deal with a group that does a lot of demonic deliverance from demonic oppression and even full on demonic uh, possession because they deal with law enforcement down in the northeast where there's a lot of these satanic cult groups and um you know, a lot of the, the Monarch program after World War II, Operation Paperclip, the U.S. government brought a lot of the scientists over from the Nazi regime and um, a lot of the mind control techniques and stuff that they're interacting now with the CIA and different programs, the Monarch and MK Ultra programs, a lot of that straight up demonic, straight up demonic. Um, not everybody that's w working in those programs really understands it, but if you get in too far, You'll know, oh yeah, yep, yep. You're dealing with the spirit realm. This is some no bueno stuff and it is dark. 
And uh, so our government's gotten into trouble, folks. They've, um, they've gotten involved in programs that are very, very counterproductive and have infested entire units in our military and intelligence community, you know, probably with good intentions starting off back in the 40s, but uh, since then have turned utterly corrupt and wicked and hostile even against the American people. So we've got real problems to deal with. And uh, the spirit war is raging at full tilt. That is what's going on. That's why everything's going on with the, the why are they going to do what they're doing with the banking? Why are they doing what they're doing with the pathogens and the lockdowns and the energy and um, fuel and everything else? It doesn't make sense until you realize these people are demonically propelled forward. They are driven to do this. Uh, for their own personal benefit, which they're misguided. They're destroying themselves, but they're destroying their own country. So a lot of people destroying our country who are, don't even know what they're doing. They're just, they're, they're just completely insane now. So um, tune in, folks. Read up, pray up, and uh, armor up, because uh, war is being made on us, and we have to be aware of what we're up against or we have no chance, all right? It's all gods. It's all gods. Everything is gods. So let's tune in and walk under his wing, you know, in his in his power and authority as children of the Most High. That's the best you can be. You know, a lot of these people, New Agers, it's very intoxicating for them to reckon themselves as gods. Well, there's no God. I'm God. Well, that's what Satan said. That was a really bad mistake. It was a really poor choice. You know, for me, being a child of the Most High, the Creator, and being loved is an overwhelming and beautiful thing and I'm grateful for it. And I don't try to fancy myself to be some sort of God and I frankly pity those who do have that misguided sense and want to feel like they are somehow gods. You don't know uh, what you're doing, uh, I would say. And it's, it's sad. I would encourage everybody, calibrate to the word of God, pray to your father, he knows the words you're going to say before you can even form them. Just plug into them. You don't even have to use words. That's that's why some people, they pray in tongues because there's two ways of praying in tongues. One was like on the day of Pentecost where there are people from all around the world and and God's apostles, uh, Jesus' apostles needed to speak and, and preach the gospel to them. And so they had supernatural understanding and could speak in these other people's foreign languages. That was a miraculous way of speaking in tongues. Another way of speaking in tongues is just you speaking to your creator in a form of communication so pure from your heart straight to his for which there are no human words. The purest communication, and if you ever seen that meme that's like, you know, Dear God, and it's just a bunch of scribble, and it says Amen, and he, and then God says, "I know." It's like that. That's what speaking in tongues is is really about between those that believe that way, and it's you don't have to do it. It's just a gift to where you're talking directly to your Creator, and a, the word, the sounds that come out of your mouth are don't matter. It's what is in your heart your spirit to your creator and you're just saying god and he's saying i know <laughs> that's what that's about folks so don't get weird out out about people that do that um they're, it's beautiful they're communicating when they're when it's done genuinely straight from their spirit to their creator and that's that's it's very very powerful and very beautiful and that's another gift that uh, when you tune in if you find that, it's a really cool thing as well. But you don't have to do it. Um, uh, but I brought that up so that if you're struggling for the words, don't worry about the words. He knows what you mean. Try to find the words, but just talk to him. Spend time talking to him, and that's enough. Okay? God bless you guys. I hope this helps you guys out there and uh, helps you guide yourselves and each other. Be careful. Um, these these therapies, you're, you're opening yourself up to these plant-based medicines. You're opening yourself up to everything. It literally are. Satan is the great deceiver. So be aware. Be aware. Don't get yourself in harm's way out there. All right.
Have a great day. God bless. See ya.